Discovery. Welcome to the Podcast Discovery Show, the podcast that's about other podcasts, where every single week we have a book club style discussion about a podcast. And at the end of the episode, we're going to recommend a brand new show. And we'll talk about that one next week. I'm Kirk. I'm Zach. And I'm Matt. And this week we are talking about Team Deacons, a uh, really interesting filmmaking podcast by Roger and James Deacons. And essentially... They talk to other people in the industry, and the episode I recommended is Robert Eggers and Jaron Blaschke, and they are the two behind movies like The Witch and The Lighthouse. And I knew this was a little bit of a technical one <laughs> for uh, for anybody who's not into movies, but what would you guys think? It was interesting, up to an extent for me, where I just glazed over a little bit <laughs> even you did <laughs> even i did man they this just, is your lane <laughs> there was a point where they just started listing numbers and i was like i don't know what these mean okay i thought those were yes. at least mean something to you guys because they know <laughs> this is you have to be like a photographer level numbers because what he was talking about right. was like exposures and light levels uh because they were shooting in film so yeah. yeah, those meant nothing to me, except I knew he was talking about exposures. It basically just showed me that he knew a lot more about what he was doing than I do. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. You know? Which is good yeah. to know. Yeah. yeah. Good to know that you're not the only person who knows anything. <laughs> I personally was very disappointed because I thought this was a podcast about like church drama and what goes behind what goes on behind the doors <laughs> uh, with the deacon meetings and stuff oh, like that. Okay. Yeah. And then it's about the movie. Some low level church drama. They've made. <laughs> I, I mean, I probably would listen to a low level church drama <laughs> podcast, but I wasn't disappointed mm. that it wasn't that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was neat to kind of peek behind the curtain. And I don't know. It's one of those things you take for granted watching movies, how much thought goes into stuff that we as consumers of them just completely take for granted. Um, yeah, right. I mean, he even mentioned it. He was like, when you grow up and you want to make films, the only job you really know of is director. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I yeah. thought that was a really interesting thing is both of these two had been working in the industry, kind of grinding away for 10 years until they yeah. had their first kind of hit, you know, because I think The Witch did pretty well. I think it was kind of a sleeper. It was kind of a, it's a, uh, you Matt's probably seen it. Kirk, have you seen The Witch? No, and I tried to watch it like three times this weekend because we had a little extra time and I wanted to watch it to learn and, and kind of see what they were talking about. So I didn't want to watch The Lighthouse again. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get to that because I definitely want you to tell the story of watching The Lighthouse. Um, but it's this really interesting period piece. It's all very stylized so there was specific choices the whole time it kind of feels in a lot of ways like the lighthouse where it's kind of a set piece you're basically on this one farm the whole time and then the how they speak in it's really interesting all of the the set design and everything you can tell that both of these two had kind of gone through different levels of production and really refined what they wanted and uh robert eggers was talking about how when he was kind of working these other jobs as like a set assistant or a production guy, he would just kind of be constantly thinking about the witch. And so by the time they actually got the green light to make this movie, he knew every <laughs> possible question that could be asked about it. And so it was yeah. just this very, very specific and very intentional film, but it's a really good one. I thought it was a, a an interesting take on this because it's, no spoilers, because it honestly is worth watching. And it has There's a witch the best. in it. There is a witch in it. <laughs> the, uh, the first scene of that movie goes really hard, and then it, and then it kind of settles into drama a little bit. Um, but it's, it's really good, and I really have liked what they've done. But that was definitely one of the things I appreciated about this show as well, is that, okay, even when they got super in the weeds, so they're talking about exposure levels on their film and everything like that, you can hear... Um, the deacons kind of be like actually picking up on this. And they were asking questions that were like specific to filmmaking at a higher level than what mm -hmm. we, what we yeah. are aware of. And so that I think is why it's 
kind of interesting, you know, because Roger Deakins has done amazing films. Like anything the Coen brothers has done for the past like 20 years, he was probably the cinematographer on it and he has multiple Oscars. He is the real deal, but kind of on a, a more technical side of the filmmaking. So it's not like a, a big name thing, like director, like the, what they were talking mm-hmm. about. Right. Well, and that's what's funny is you, you don't realize that like DPs are almost more in charge of what you see in a film than, than probably the director in a lot of regards, because they're, they're deciding where the camera goes. They're deciding how the camera moves. They're deciding what the light looks like. Like they're deciding so many things. And the director is more in charge of like the action and stuff of like how everybody interacts with the frame. It's just so interesting because that's what it's exactly the the cool thing is you have these teams of directors and DPs and I'll be honest I wanted to hear more from Deacons I was like man here he is asking all these questions and <laughs> and they were kind of like well we've only done two features so you know this is our this is our experience thus far and I was kind of like man Deacons has done like you know, so many films. I oh, just yeah. want to be like, you tell, you tell them how you do it. Deacons. No, honestly, I would love to see it flip oh. where somebody interviews him because he has done legendary stuff because I literally, there's been a couple times where I was able to call an Oscar and one of them was the newest Blade Runner movie, which was, oh, yeah. um, Roger Deakins was, was the cinematographer there, but mm-hmm. it was for, uh, Denis Villeneuve. And that movie, I watched it and I was like, I mean, that movie was much more dramatic than I thought it was going to be, but mm-hmm. it was beautiful the whole time. Amazing. I have a question because I haven't ever watched that movie um, all the way through. Is it based, is it the same as the original movie? It's so, in the same universe, yeah. I think okay. they say. So it's not the same have story. Have you not seen it either? I Me? haven't seen it. Oh, oh no, you just said you said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, it's kind of like a sequel. But I read it's the not, book. <laughs> it, it's yeah. not at all like... Don't think Hollywood sequel. Think that he kind of went in that world and made a new story. Are there electric sheep? I mean, uh, don't want to spoil tell. anything, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally in the title of the book. And I was like, well, how is there not electric sheep in these movies? Um, it's, it's interesting, though, because it is. It's a time jump forward. And the way that he talked about how he loved sci fi, too, was really cool because it was like, I imagine sci-fi from a DP perspective is really dope because you get to play with colors and stuff that you don't normally get to Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because like you can be weird with it. But like from a director, which is funny because from a direction standpoint, you have to sort of take concepts and ideas of how people live in the world today and then push them forward without them being like, caricatures of what the future is otherwise it risks being like judge Dre- or not judge dread uh demolition man where it's like oh, oh demolition this is man. an eye scanner where you look into it and it reads your mind it's like okay that's stupid i know and i do <laughs> you know? feel like demolition man is a great example of doing stupid well enough that it <laughs> yeah. holds up big time exactly i love that movie it's a really good movie that's completely stupid but I mean, yeah. what do you like you you think about the executives at that time like we're going to put Stallone and Wesley Snipes <laughs> in the future, and we're going to see what happens. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. And I think Sandra Bullock was in that, too. She was. She I was. want to circle back around to something you mentioned, Matt. You mentioned how much power and kind of, uh, I guess, driving force a DP can have yeah. for a show, for a, for a movie. And um, I thought that was really interesting. The advice that Eggers got when he was young. He was a young director. Yeah. And a, another more seasoned director said, hey... Uh, don't get a DP that is older than you or has a lot more experience than you because he will literally just steamroll you and this your movie will yeah. not end up the way you want it to be. And when and when they when when he said that, you could hear both the deacons as being like, huh. As, <laughs> as though like they they haven't gotten jobs and they just realized that maybe that's why. It's like, oh, these <laughs> these kids don't want to try and oh. deal with this. But no, I also love the <laughs> the reason that they kind of met in the first place is because he thought his name sounded uh, exotic. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Blaschke was like, oh, he must be Eastern European. This is going to be interesting. And he's like, well, I tricked you then, huh? <laughs> so it's just, and then they kind of just became 
really close. I love this idea too, where you kind of see the meeting of these two people that will probably end up working together for a long time. You know, you, it seems like they have really good chemistry between the two of them and their artistic vision. And first of all, I really like what they've done so far. Really like the witch, really like the lighthouse. And actually uh, I think it is time for uh, Kirk. We need some feedback on the lighthouse because I remember when Kirk asked me, uh, Kirk just texted me. <sighs> and he's like, Hey, is the lighthouse good? And I was like, Yes, but <laughs> you might not enjoy the lighthouse. It's um because and it, it's not like a judgment at all, but like it has no narrative structure. And I know that you would like a narrative structure and things like that. And so it's uh, yeah. And actually, Twigs is in here too, and she was a part of this experience. So Kirk, why don't you go ahead and tell us how it went after I told you it is a good movie that you might I, not enjoy. You didn't. Okay, so. I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me it was a movie about dudes masturbating on a lighthouse. It's implied. That's basically it's 90% implied. of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Willem Dafoe's in it. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, it's implied. <laughs> I, I didn't. I mean, I've seen him in Spider-Man. I don't remember. No, it's <laughs> in there. Any webs during then. It's in there. It was, uh, I think it was <laughs> one of the cutscenes they put yeah. in the, like, the re-release on DVD. Exactly. Oh, it, it Sam was, Raimi's theatrical cut <laughs> did not include it. <laughs> I, can, I, I will say I could see the the appeal from the visual standpoint of like some of the stuff that they did visually was crazy. Like, Oh yeah. It just was a beautiful movie, but I hate movies that don't have a freaking plot. I'm sorry. If you give me, if you, I'm watching a movie to be entertained. That's, that's, that's the whole purpose. Are you it. not entertained? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was just uncomfortable the entire time. I mean, it could have something to do with the fact that you're like, hey, Twigs, do you want to watch The Lighthouse? And you both just watched this together without yeah, any kind was, of context it ended of what's up happening. being not what I expected uh, at all. But also, like, it was one of those ones that I also don't like movies that don't have a, a good ending or, like, you don't know what happened or what it was uh, about. And then you, at the end, yeah. you're like, what did I just watch? It just feels like you just wasted all your time because you don't even know <laughs> what just happened. You know, and and then I, I, I did some internet research later and nobody knew what happened in that movie. Nobody. <laughs> There's nothing but theories as to what actually the movie was about. And I will say that I love hate that. It. I love I hate that. It. Because then it leaves it, each person can kind of have their own view at it. And first of all, I do understand why. I ain't making no freaking movie. They're making a movie. I'm supposed to be told what happened. No, That's you don't their job. To, you know. <laughs> I love that they've left it open because, and I also love it, especially on the lighthouse specifically, is because that whole movie is like a descent into madness. And by the end, you're like, I feel like I'm losing it. I don't, I've lost the plot. I've lost what's happening. I don't know what's real anymore. And they kind of take you there as you're watching the, the actors go there. And it was extremely well acted. It, it was, was very well acted. It basically was a play. They're in like one room the whole time. And so it's just, I don't know. I really appreciated it. I did. I did warn you because I fully understand why people <laughs> wouldn't be able to immediately get into the lighthouse because it's, it's an intense movie to watch. You do feel weird afterwards. And I, 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 I did definitely, I can, I give it kudos. There's like two actors in the whole movie, which is really cool. And they act their asses off. It was an amazingly acted movie. Um, visually it was stunning and I do I do get that it was about basically going mad and it made you feel that and you definitely just you saw it but I hate it when there's no plot <laughs> and also there was so much masturbating I don't get it <laughs> you didn't what hate that Eggers, part there just was is, it was just an observation love masturbating so much well, I think it's more that the, the thing is there are two dudes that are just stuck in a lighthouse for seven months and so he just, no, but he said in the interview that like he had, he had an <laughs> erection in it and he took it because they're like, this can't be NC-17 too. That there can't. was already a million other reasons that the movie yeah. probably shouldn't be made. <laughs> like at least conventionally, you know, for, for, uh, to make money. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's, that's also something that I really appreciate is he just made the movie he wanted to make because I'm sure I remember when the trailers for this come, were coming out. It looked amazing. I love the cast of it. And I was like, okay, this looks sweet, but they kind of framed it as like a horror movie. And so yeah. I bet there was a lot of people who were very confused leaving the movie theater. I did think it was yeah. going to be a horror movie. I really did. And it was, 
<laughs> horrific in a different way. <laughs> yeah i mean i always i it's hard it's hard not to see the lighthouse as a, as a metaphor for an erect uh penis yeah uh, i would say so as too we, I, I feel like it was a descent into madness from the perspective of uh masculinity toxic masculinity basically i could see that because Which, defoe was intense in that movie <laughs> damn ye winslow <laughs> that whole <laughs> monologue where he's like do you like the lobster? <laughs> I couldn't even figure out who that, was going crazy or if they were one, both going crazy or if I was going crazy. It, I think they were both, uh, you know, I think everyone was going crazy. Yeah, I just, I really appreciated like the originality of what they did here. And then they talk in this episode about all of the crazy detail that was involved yeah. in mm-hmm. doing it. They shot in an intentionally hard format with film. And so they, they added 10 layers of extra difficulty on top of filming in a lighthouse that they had to construct. And like, it was the whole thing was clearly something that they had a passion for. They had a, a view of what they wanted it to be and they wouldn't, they wouldn't compromise on it. So it's, I I really appreciated that about it, but I loved kind of this conversation where you're talking to uh, two people who are extremely successful in the industry. They're talking to two up and comers and you kind of get, sometimes you do get in the weeds because they're all in this. They are all, they're like peers and they're talking about things that they understand and we don't. <laughs> yeah. But if you really enjoy filmmaking or even if you want to be more involved in doing filmmaking, I think that you pick up even more from this. If you're trying to learn the actual craft of it, I bet there's even more that you can gain from this than us who are just like, I, I mean, Matt, Matt has a lot more experience with uh, production and everything like that than Kirk and I. I just like movies. Mm-hmm. And so I yeah. enjoyed it from that level, but I think that you can enjoy it even more so if you were trying to dig in and learn. And then I yeah. read that Team Deacons, you can go on their website and you can just ask them questions. You sign up and like they wow. have like a forum and the whole point of the forum is kind of like filmmaker to filmmaker kind of conversations and questions. And so I think that this podcast literally just came from that where they are really genuinely interested in like the craft. And in um, putting like resources out there to help other people get involved in it. And all of it was just like, okay, this each like layer I unfolded about like what was happening. I was like, okay, that's really cool too. So yeah, if you're interested in that, you can go and learn from the man himself. Apparently they're all active on there. It's an active community uh, at their, at their website. Super cool. I also really, when, when they did start just naming those numbers, cause there was this great moment where he's like, let's talk about the specifics. And he's like, uh, let's not bore people with that. <laughs> and then it was like, and then 20 minutes later, it's like, yeah, we, uh, we get a graded, uh, color Kodak for a uh, hundred, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, it, and it started to make sense halfway through and I'm like, ah, oh, okay. But I loved the story of how they, they had very low, uh, ISO basically film. Mm-hmm. Like a hundred is very low. So they had to really light everything like extensively. <laughs> and I love the image of them just getting blasted. He said, what, how many Watts was that one light? I can't remember, but he said like, it was hard to keep your eyes open and people were in yeah, sunglasses. He was on set. Like, if you look at them, they probably had little pinprick pupils <laughs> in the movie, which I just loved the image of them just getting go- literally going mad as actors because <laughs> they're just being basically tortured with light <laughs> and uh yeah so basically the lower grading it is you'd have to light it even higher up so it was just like i just love that image of willem dafoe being like i can't do this this is ridiculous <laughs> i hope um, he stayed in character for it and he was yelling at him like the character from the lighthouse damn ye winslow no. turn that light down <laughs> I, I love that scene by the way the one where he's oh, yelling God. about the lobster oh and that low angle oh it's just beautiful oh my God. It's yeah. Oh I it, honestly, this makes me want to re- revisit. But I'm going to rewatch it. I yeah, don't know sure. if you have seen it, but there's a new movie coming from them. They talk about in this called The Northman. No, that and sounds. It, it sounds is good. a Viking revenge <laughs> yeah. movie. It's going to be wanted, good. I looked it up. I wanted to watch that over The Witch, but it's not out yet. So uh, your your trep your trepidation is showing. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> now that I know who's making this, He's I worried just about the surprised. masturbation. I just will. I'm just going to expect all the masturbation and uh, no plot, but um, I'll still watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Northman is actually a metaphor for, again, uh, 
an erect penis. Um, <laughs> so sorry to spoil that, but. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I, I I really appreciated this one. Uh, if you're into filmmaking or into movies, there is a ton of people that you can check out. Or because, erect penises. Yeah, I mean, I guess <laughs> I think there's other things you could do if that was really what you're looking for. But um, True. <laughs> but basically, you can look into a lot of this, and because they're cinematographers, there's a lot of conversations with cinematographers. And, but you have like I see John Turturro already on here. And a ton of different cinematographers. Yeah. And so I, you have a lot of choices. Yeah. I would almost say like, if you don't recognize names on, on there and you're interested in it at all, like Google those names and see what, what they've done. And you'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll watch it. Cause usually they're not credited. <laughs> it's not like directed by mm-hmm. and then right under that director of photography, <laughs> this guy. This I person. do kind of love it though, because yeah. there are a couple that, and actually, uh, Roger Deakins is one of them that I kept uh, because I'd seen all the Cohen movies. And I'm like, these movies are amazing. And you just see, keep seeing Roger Deakins. And it was the same thing with um, uh, Villeneuve, same thing. And then um, what's his name? Lube- Luz Besky. Yeah. Uh, the one who works with Alfonso Cuaron. Yeah. He's another one that just every one he shoots, I'm like, wow. But that is a cool element of this where they aren't necessarily the big flashy name on the title screen. But they no, get but a chance to go on here. Yeah, yeah, you'd recognize their work, you know. That's that's why I'm like, you should Google them and just check it out. Because like, there's a great website called All Music where you can go see who mastered tracks. And you're like, oh, no kidding. That guy hmm. masters a lot of the same albums that I love, you know. And it's kind of the same thing. It's like, oh, that's it the is, person who does. Huh. It is funny to see uh, or to be, you know, to get, get a peek at something that we all consume and there's an art that like there are masters of that we don't even know anything about, you know, or like we don't, they don't get the credit that like the actor does or something like that. Yeah. Um, Like, like you said, like people that mix music or, you know, there's people that are just, they are masters and people in the industry know their name, but it's, it's interesting. Cause like, heck I'm watching a, a, weird Netflix thing that's about mountain climbing and they're talking about all these super famous in mountain climbing. Mm. Everyone knows who they are. I've never heard of any of these people. You know what I mean? So it is interesting uh, how in every, in every field, you know, there's people that really excel, but we still don't know. (laughs) Yeah. And I also really appreciated how they shouted out both his locations manager in the lighthouse, which is, Mm-hmm. Whoever that's a thanks really to location manager, one, yeah. yeah, and then a key grip for getting for rigging something and like by name both of them, and I was like, oh, dope, that's super cool. Yeah, and they also you're like, oh yeah, the unsung heroes. Mm-hmm. They also said in here that maybe the most important thing in in an entire movie is the editing because that's the right. that's the final move. That's what makes the movie. Other than that, you've just recorded a bunch of stuff and you try and curate it to see what's going to make a movie. And so I That's do what I think about podcasting as well. Is the editing is the most important part. You would. I'm think just that. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, just I kidding. Mean, <laughs> no, you're right, though. I, I do think it is because we've heard a lot of podcasts that they lose it on the editing and it can lose the whole thing. Yeah. Thankfully, you don't have to edit this one at all. Really? No. Just, we are flawless done, every time. It's boop. We've actually gotten a lot better. Way at the beginning, there was so many edit points. Yeah, I'll uh, say that started, being live like that anymore. and having accountability for what comes out of your yeah. mouth really helps with <laughs> it, that. It does help. <laughs> it does help a lot. Well, I guess that brings us to this week's recommendation. And I've got one that um, I've listened to a few episodes and I wanted to find one that just kind of hit. And this one hit. Uh, the name of the podcast is Not Past It. It's kind of like a history podcast, but it's a pop culture history podcast. So it's about things that most of the stuff we'll remember or like our parents would. Um, and it's it's fascinating. And the episode that I want to recommend is the LSD no hitter. Uh, let me read the synopsis real quick. Oh, I Doc Ellis. Ellis. Pirates <gasps> pitcher Doc Ellis played the best game of his career while tripping on acid. On June 12th, 1970, Ellis pitched a no hitter. Simone tells the story of his trip and what it can teach us about psychedelic drugs and performance anxiety. Huh. Well, I'm hyped. Interesting. I've never had a deep dive on this one. I knew the story in general that somebody was 
on LSD and threw a no hitter. <laughs> but I, I can't wait to hear the. It's the just a, it's a really good story. It's a crazy story. There's a lot of stuff from him from like a different interview because I don't think he's alive anymore. Um, I could be wrong. We'll remember when we <laughs> listen to the podcast again. <laughs> so uh, don't fact check me on that. But um, yeah, it's a it's a crazy story, and it was really cool to hear his his take on it. So yeah, um, that um, is uh, not past it. The LSD no hitter. And remember, there's always more to discover. <laughs>